let's just take that right from the top. Hello, from the top. everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. So I'm uh, supposed to be emceeing the Chain React conference, and I'm not doing that right now. But uh, you should check it out. It's cool, if you're, especially if you're interested in, in learning React Native. Um, it's a great team, a great, uh, a great conference. Um, so I'm taking a little bit of time. I'm hiding in the green room right now, and we are going to talk about micro front ends, um, which I'm sure everybody still has a lot of hot takes on, on uh, micro front ends. And <laughs> we're going to kind of dive into it. And, and so I had this, this, um, this kind of idea a while back when we were first starting to work on themes where something that's really cool about this is like if you work on a large team and each team owns a route, right? Like there's the account team and there's the dashboard team and there's the, the reports team. Um, on bigger teams, like when I, when I used to work at IBM, we had this where each team owned their own microservice. I worked on a team that, spe that specialized on the accounts. And so everything under like cloud.ibm.com slash account was owned by my team. And then to ship that to production, we had to stand up a node server. We had to set up like Nginx reverse proxies. There was all this work required to get it to actually operate on the website. And when we started working on themes, I had this moment where I was like, oh my God, this could solve all of those problems because we could ship the theme to render at slash account and we would lose the need to spin up a, an engine, or Nginx reverse proxy. We'd lose the need to stand up a node server and instead we'd be able to just like ship a Gatsby site and because it's a theme, it would stitch together with all the other Gatsby sites that people were working on for slash dashboard and slash whatever and Gatsby would do all this deduping and perf optimization and preloading and prefetching so um, I started talking about it to Chris and Chris was like oh yeah of course so you know I thought I was having this moment of brilliance and he was like yeah yeah I thought about that a long time ago um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, our guest today is is Chris Biscardi I think I was muted when I initially introduced you but um, Chris do you want to talk a little bit about your like your path and and what you're doing these days Specifically relating to micro finance? I mean, yeah, you, uh, you know what? If the okay. floor is yours. You can talk about whatever you want. Um, sure, yeah. So I am a self taught art major dropout from like, I don't know, 10 years ago at this point. Um, learned ActionScript when I was a long time ago. Apple killed it. Learned JavaScript. Learned a bunch of other stuff in between. Um, built a team when I was at Docker. Um, has spent most of my career remote and most of my career as either a freelancer or a consultant, depending on the period of my career I was in. And then, uh, yeah, now I'm, I've been building a bunch of stuff for Gatsby for uh, a while now. So, yeah. Very cool. So um, in the interest of, of me not being too big of a jerk and, and shirking my duties as an MC, um, I think we should aim to keep <laughs> this on a, on a little bit on the shorter side. But uh, if we want to build a, um, if we want to build this out, how would we uh, get started? Uh, so obviously this is a themes related show. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is set up a Yarn workspace. Okay. So let me, uh, and just to, to kind of get us rolling here, I've got an empty folder. There's nothing in it. So I'm going to touch package.json. And then we'll move over to VS Code. And in here, um, Chris, are you seeing this in the live share? I am seeing this. Would you like me to type? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. We're, <laughs> we're using um, VS Code Live Share, and I love this tool. Like, it's so cool. Uh, we'll just oh, look, I can help. Practices. Yes, help. <laughs> <laughs> and I think. Oh, these... do you not have prettier autosave? I don't so, know. If, so don't, all of my code has turned into like one giant line blob, and then I save, and prettier just. I think that's oh. a. I, I feel like if the 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 author of prettier was here, he would say that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, uh, do we need a version here? I forget if we need the version here, or not. Oh God, that didn't work at all. Did you try to finish my quote? Is that what just happened? I'm, I'm attempting to help, and it's it's going poorly. <laughs> All right, let me let me do this one. Okay, um, cool. So we've got we've got our workspaces okay. set up. We're gonna make this that though, so that we have. 
Okay. All of the packages, not just whatever. So um, I'm going to create that packages folder, and then what packages do we want in here? So let's create a site, uh, and let's create two folders for themes, because we need to prove that this works from two different places. But um, yeah, so basically one site um, and one theme for now. Okay, but and I, I'm explicitly not following our naming convention for this because I want it to be easy to type. Um, <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's uh, actually, we, we're going to have to fix that, aren't we? I believe have Gatsby. Sorry. Uh, I, you broke up a little bit, but I believe it has to have Gatsby. Fine, okay. Well, the technical restriction here, we're currently matching on Gatsby as the prefix for translation in workspaces. Right, and then I'm going to take a shortcut here. I'm going to go into packages, and we'll go to Gatsby theme one, and I'm just going to yarn init Y so that we don't have to write that ourselves. And I'm going to do the same thing for the site. Um, that'll give us our... Yeah, okay, so we've got the site, and we've got Gatsby theme one. Um, and so this is just kind of like the, the general setup. Then the next thing we need to do, if I'm remembering correctly, is uh, is just install dependencies, right? Yes. OK. So do the React Gatsby dance, uh, et cetera, which I'm sure you're familiar with. We'll get in React, React DOM, and Gatsby into the site as regular dependencies. The Did I do something wrong? Um, you're in site right now. Right, but I should still have. Did we break something? It should. It should be reading that. Workspaces. Did I mistype workspaces or something? No, you did it. <laughs> I. I. So I never add these. Does this matter? I'm gonna delete this and see if it sure. makes a change. So weird. Okay, so something happened. You either can't add a name or can't add a version in a workspace, or else it it doesn't read. Because as soon That's as I not true, I must have mistyped something. I, I have no idea. Whatever whatever <laughs> it was, whatever it was, it didn't work. I so, messed something up. <laughs> let me let me go back to my yarn workspace site ad. We're gonna get those dependencies in. Um, I'm gonna review this video later and watch that I missed a comma or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have our node modules going, and I'm on conference Wi-Fi here, so hopefully this doesn't turn into a problem. Um, <laughs> so let's give this a try. Uh, and I apologize for the background noise. You can hear the the speakers kind of coming over the, the PA. I, like I said, I'm in the green room here. Um, so, oh, come on. Do it's the like thing. a brown brick room, actually. It's, it's actually, it's super <laughs> cool. So, like, this this is an old armory building. And so, if I just point oh, this okay. around a little bit, it's, like, a really gorgeous space. Um, See, you didn't know it, but this is actually uh, the Cribs episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we've got it in the site, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a dev dependency, or not a dev dependency, I want to make it a, a peer dependency. So Gatsby theme 1, and we want it to be a peer dependency, and I actually do need to add things. So uh, yarn workspace Gatsby theme 1, add as a peer dependency, Gatsby react react DOM. So let's let that rip. And that should happen much faster because we've already got those dependencies downloaded. Oh, did I speak too soon? No, all right, we're good. So, um, and the, the nice thing about running workspaces is that all the node modules install at the top level and the themes themselves only install things they need like the binaries. Um, and that helps us like avoid deduping. And if we run this yarn workspaces info, Oh wait, we haven't actually added it to the site yet. So we need to do yarn workspace site add Gatsby theme one, and I'm gonna set it at star so that we get every version. Um, and that's something that I've seen, like if, you, if you've got a theme and it hasn't been published yet, sometimes yarn workspaces has a hard time installing it if you don't use the, the star signifier. Um, but now that we've got that, I can do yarn workspaces info, and it'll show us, um, here that the workspace dependency is, is Gatsby theme one. And that just means that Yarn is going to use the local version of this theme, even though it's installed as far as, uh, as, far as Node is concerned as a, a regular NPM package. Um, and we've reached the extent of my knowledge on this subject. So Chris, do you want to tell us what <laughs> happens next? Cool. So uh, let's see. We have the theme folder. We have the site folder. Are we using the theme in the site yet? 
Uh, I don't we're think we are. not. So, so let's get that Gatsby config going. Okay, here's a Gatsby config. And we'll do what? Module.exports. And then we'll do plugins. And do we need to do this as an object, do you think? I guess we uh, No, we're not going to pass in any options to this. So. Okay, so Gatsby theme one. And. I mean, we're, that, we're good, right? It's, it's... Yeah, should be good. We should be able to run this, and then, uh, I mean, nothing will happen, but it should not break. <laughs> so we're going to run the site, which has now installed the theme. And things did break, which means we haven't set up our scripts. So I'm going to go into site, oh, yes. and I will add my scripts, and I want develop. Uh, and that's going to run Gatsby develop, and then... Out of an abundance of caution, I am also going to set up clean. Because uh, Gatsby clean, if we need to like get rid of the cache or get rid of built artifacts, that will take care of that for us. So now that the command exists, we can run Yarn Workspace Site Develop. It's going to run Gatsby Develop for us, and assuming we didn't typo anything, it will build a completely empty Gatsby site. While we're waiting for this to build, I would love to get everyone's uh, hot takes on micro front ends in the chat. Get those spicy takes ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean, it's it, like it's building. Um, things are happening, but we we haven't actually created anything um, yet. We should create an index file because we will need one to link to different areas of the application. Okay, so and we're doing that in source pages in site or the theme. In site. Okay. Because uh, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to say uh, site is some application. Uh, in this index.js file, what we're going to do is just have like uh, one piece of text inside of a div, and then we're going to use two links from Gatsby. Um, and all we need to do is say like, hey, we're in the site, and that site needs to be able to link to other places. Whoa. What did I do? There we go. Export default index. Cool. And now, is that going to make me reload to see it? Nope, it's going to work. Make that a little cool. bigger. Nope. Awesome. So, yeah, so what we have here is a site and a theme. The theme is doing nothing. The site is rendering one page. Just recap of everything. Probably I lost the part where you guys explain what is micro front ends. Wait, was I yeah. muted when I talked? Did I, did I do the whole spiel about IBM micro microservices while muted? No, I think uh, maybe you might have. Oh God! If I'm um, not remembering correctly. Did uh, somebody in the chat? Can you can you remind me? Did you hear me talk about microservices at IBM, or did I do that whole thing on mute? And now we watch the chat. <laughs> now we watch. <laughs> How long of a delay do you think this is? <laughs> um, I mean, I have it on low latency. Okay, somebody didn't did hear anything hear? about micro front ends. Um, okay. So, Chris, do you want to do a version? Because I I feel like I already did. Sure. So um, there's been some hubbub on Twitter lately about this thing called micro front ends, which is basically like you have a bunch of different teams and all of those teams need to have control of their piece of the application. And uh, the way that a bunch of people are talking about this right now is just basically like if that team wants to use Angular and that team wants to use React and that team wants to use Svelte, uh, they can all do that. Uh, that is not necessarily the only way to do it. But the core idea for micro front ends is that you basically have individual sections of your application that are controlled by a single team and don't need to worry about the other teams, right? Uh, so what we're doing today is we're basically using themes as this micro front end pattern. In our case, we're just gonna stay with React for everything and yield control to each of these teams. So each of these teams is going to have their own theme, which can be installed into a Gatsby application. Uh, that theme can live either in the same repo as we're doing today, uh, for expediency purposes, or it could live in a completely different repo and you can just do MPM publishes and the site can go build. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, and, and kind of a use case on this is like when I, when I was working at IBM, each team owned a different part of the application. So we, we all worked on cloud.ibm.com, but um, my team was the account team, which means that we owned everything under slash account. 
and the other team would own dashboard and another team would own billing and so on and so forth. And so we had uh, 37 different microservices in the IBM Cloud uh, app and each one of them required its own node server. We had to set up Nginx reverse proxies. There were all these things required to make this function. And then they were completely independent apps, which meant that we lost, like, if you installed React on yours, you'd have to download a fresh copy of that React bundle on the next route, despite the fact that you were actually in the same, like, you know, same app. So um, one of the things that I'm really excited about with Gatsby, using Gatsby as a micro front end, is because they're bundled together as themes, we're going to dedupe those dependencies and make sure that you've got things like prefetching between routes. So even though they're technically completely discrete code bases, um, did I just freeze up? Um, but it, even though they're completely discrete, you froze up a little bit, but I think we're good. Okay, but yeah. So so generally speaking, like you you'll you'll just get like a lot of benefits while not giving up control or autonomy. Like teams will still be able to independently deploy and own their code from top to bottom. Um, but using this this workflow, you would have the ability to effectively just have a, a nice, like, cross-functional, easy-to-share type of, of deployment pipeline. Um, so with all that being said, and not on mute this time, let's, uh, <laughs> let's build ourselves our, what, our first micro front end? Yeah. Um, just one more quick thing is we're using Gatsby as sort of this orchestration layer. Uh, you could choose to use a different front end uh, framework for every single different micro front end, but uh, you definitely don't have to. And we're not definitely not saying that that's the best way to build everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so we need to go into the theme now. And we basically need to tell this theme that uh, it has control over some sub segment of our application. Okay. There are two ways that we can think about this basically. Uh, since Gatsby basically has a bunch of infrastructure for static routes, right? Which is like the create page calls and things like that, which everybody is probably familiar with if they have been following themes over the last week or so. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that we're going to do today is client side routes and dispatching client side routes to each of these micro front ends. So we need to install two packages into our theme. One of them is Gatsby plug plugin page creator. And this is the plugin that uh, Gatsby uses internally to deal with the source pages support. And the other one is Gatsby plugin create client paths. Gatsby plugin create, create client, client paths. Yep. Okay. So oh, Gatsby plugin it. create client paths. I forgot uh, to actually add it. There we go. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, Gatsby, okay, so Gatsby plugin page creator is, like I said, uh, Gatsby's internal plugin that uh, enables the source pages support. So if you create a .js file in source pages, it just gives you a page. We need that support because we need some sub segment of our uh, application, like slash marketplace or slash dashboard slash star or whatever. Uh, we need to serve some index file so that that actually gets used, right? So that's what page creator is for. Create client paths is a easier way or a higher level way to allocate that sub route. Uh, so in our theme, what we're going to do in uh, Gatsby config, do you, everything's installed now, right? Yeah, it's, it should be all installed. Uh, we're good. So do you want to take over here? We can sure, sure. I can follow along. I can open the right file in my uh, live VS code. Actually, I need to create a file. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I think this will work. Let's see. Uh, Gatsby config. That should be a Gatsby config in Gatsby theme one. This v this VS share stuff is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do here is uh, create a Gatsby config for our theme, uh, and in our plugins array, we're going to add these two plugins that we just installed, basically. Uh, so the first one is going to be Gatsby plugin create client paths. And the other, uh, yeah, and we're going to need some options here. And the other one is going to be, uh, where is this? Gatsby plugin page create dog. And that will also take some options. 
Cool. Yay, prettier. Um, <laughs> so there are options for the create client pass and there are options for the page creator. The page creator is the simpler one, so we're going to do that first. Right, let, me, let me mute. Cause... Okay. So the page creator options are uh, us saying that this is the directory inside of our theme that we want to use as uh, basically source pages works in a normal Gatsby site. So what we're going to do is dir name source pages. Failed to save Gatsby config. The content of the file is newer. Please compare your version with the file contents. Were you able to just save that? Is I that what just happened. I just saved it and it worked. I don't. Maybe it was like a live share caching thing. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, that's what we need. So now we have source pages support inside of our theme. And for the create client paths, uh, what we're going to do here is allocate some sub URL to be client side only. And we're going to give that sub URL to our um, theme to control basically. So in here, we'll say that this is the uh, dashboard team, right? So I also can't save this. So if you can save that, that would be great. Um, so this is the dashboard team. Uh, so Gatsby theme one will be under control of dashboard team. We can also have something like a marketplace team that controls like app slash marketplace, which we'll cover later. But this is basically everything that we need. Um, we now need two more things. One of them is that we need an index file in source pages app dashboard in our theme. Okay, and so now I've got import React from React. Uh, I assume that you're going to do something magic in here, right? Uh, we're actually not going to do really anything super interesting in here. Um, we can later. This is basically the file that your team will use to bootstrap everything else they want to do, right? Okay. So we need to export a component. That component for now can be anything. Uh, so like dashboard or my dashboard or like, yay. This and like in the future, we could make this um, like off restricted or something like that. Sure. We probably don't yeah. have time for that today, but like that's the intent, right? Yeah. This team that owns this theme controls everything in this file, which means that you can put reach router in here and do a complete everything that's a sub route of this, right? Or you could throw in re uh, React router if you wanted to use a different one, or you could. Right. Like you can you really view or something like that. Yeah, you're now full free for all at this point, right? Like you're right. you're rendering a DOM element, and once that DOM DOM element is on the screen, you can do literally anything you want. Yeah, as long as you can, like, you could even do raw JavaScript here, but like, mm. we won't even get into that. Um, cool. So we have our Gatsby config set up in our theme. We have this page that we need. One other thing that we need for this to work is a link to the one of these pages in our index.js and our site, right? Because we need a way for our users to get to this page. So in here, we can use a link from Gatsby. OK, so I will import a link. Whoops. Import link. And this is uh, one of the other interesting parts of using Gatsby as the orchestration layer for micro friends, is that it hands you all of this navigation uh, infrastructure just by default. So you can use everything that you want to use inside of your subsection. And then when you want to go and move to somebody else's page, you can use Gatsby's link infrastructure to do that. Yeah. And so we're basically saying like link to the like app dashboard, or it can be the app dashboard, whatever, or app dashboard. Like yeah. And dashboard so one. upon saving this, uh, oh, I, I stopped so we could install. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Site develop. Um, Assuming all goes well. Uh, nope, things did not go well. What happened? All right, so we have client only pass found invalid prefix pattern app dashboard star. Okay. What did, uh, okay, let's I think let's that we up. might have forgotten the initial slash is the issue there. Uh, yeah, it needs to be a root path. So I, I didn't ah, do slash okay, app okay. slash dashboard. Yeah, I mean, it's like, 
All right. Uh, so I just put that in and saved it. That is fixed, and so we shall stop and restart. And nothing up our sleeves. Um, all right, so that built without problems. So we can get in and let's check out what happened. Hey, we got a link to our dashboard. There's a link to the dashboard. And we've got our dashboard. Cool. So that is the... Um, that is the core of everything. From here, you can do anything that you want, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can stick a router in here. We can stick another framework in here. We can stick uh, anything that we want. We could, yeah, anything. Well, and what, um, what's also really cool about this too is like, um, so it, it, all my experience is IBM related, so another IBM story incoming. Um, <laughs> when we did this, uh, they have the Carbon Design team. <laughs> And so the, the Carbon Design team at IBM built a component library that spans um, React, vanilla JavaScript, Angular, Vue, and they, they shipped that as a way for all IBM teams to have a consistent UI. And that's, I mean, it's cool, but like the challenge that they ran into was that everybody had to manually install this and they had to do all these things to make sure that it was available inside of their, their UI. Um, a cool thing with this Gatsby uh, micro front end thing is that if you were to have your component library as just an additional theme that supplies these components, then every theme in here would be able to do something like, I mean, we don't have it right now, but if we were looking at our dashboard, we could do something like, um, you know, import layout and header from like Gatsby theme common or something. And then we'd right. be able to just build our dashboard using these common layouts. Um, if you're using theme UI, you've already got things like a layout and a header and your container all built in, and then you would be able to supply design tokens in your common uh, your common theme that would skin the entire micro front end. So like you as a developer would never have to ship anything styled, you would just ship defaults, and a styled team could update the entire look of the app without ever touching your code. You would just have to conform to the theme UI spec. So the, the possibilities here are really, really interesting and really powerful. Yeah, so there, what this does is it opens up a lot more uh, opportunity for chopping up the groups of people that work on different parts of the application. Uh, and if you do this with themes, you also get the advantage of shadowing and things like that. Um, so individual teams can add any plugins they want with the config that they need. Um, individual teams can shadow things. You can have a, a team that's responsible for the layout, for the header, the footer, et cetera and they can have their own theme and people can just pull that in or shadow it and it'll be uh, it'll just work. Um, so you get a lot of opportunity for organizational design out of this uh, architecture pattern. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's super powerful. So um, something that would be kind of interesting here, maybe we should set up, uh, like should we set up something inside of the, the dashboard since we added these client only paths? Um, sure. So let's, yeah, let's do that so we can show off how so it So you want to set works. up like Reach Router? Sure. I mean, we've or... already got Reach Router as part of Gatsby, so we can do that. Sure. Um, so so we... what do we have here that we can do that's not? Uh... I mean, we could just set up like a really simple route, like a, a dashboard, uh, you know, one and two, really. Sure. Let's do it. Um, okay. So I have to look up Reach Router, though, because I don't remember <laughs> the. Let's see. Here's Reach UI. We're going to Router. And we want to look at basic usage, because that's what we need here. Um, we are going to set up, oh, this is kind of cool. So we're going to import router, and then we can use Gatsby link, because we've already kind of got that. Yep. So let's import router. So there are um, two paths that you could take here, right? So I had a very similar situation that um, Jason had at IBM when I was at Docker. We had a bunch of different properties. We had a bunch of different teams. We had Docker Hub, Docker Store, Docker Marketplace, Docker, three million other things because we were a startup and we were always launching new stuff. So we could do one of two things for our routes here, and we could actually uh, build infrastructure in our own Gatsby plugin to go out into each of these themes and discover any of the routes that they want to handle and then pull them into a core router. Or we could do it this way, uh, which delegates all of the authority for a subsection of the application to an individual team. Yeah, uh, somebody, 
somebody's asking if you can actually use Gatsby Link with Reach Router. Uh, and I believe the answer to that is yes, because that's the way that Gatsby works. It's and just a wrapper around Reach Router Link. Exactly, yeah. Gatsby Router, or Gatsby's Link is actually just Reach Router. Um, with, we add a little extra to make it do prefetching on hover and a couple other nice things like that. But um, in general, there's there's nothing nothing too special about how it works outside of just being able to um, import it from Gatsby. So let's get ourselves a little bit of space here, and then I'm going to set up... Um, oh, I need to get one. So I'm going to import one from... Components one. Oh, I spelled components wrong. Yeah, you probably also don't need to do a separate file. You could probably do a const if you want to to make the little. Uh... Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> because I know you're gonna have to create more than one of these. So. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. That's that's what I should have done. Um, so what I will do is, uh, yeah, that's that's smart. That's what I should have done. I will do, um, the router is going to take the one component and we'll put the path at uh, one, or just uh, one. And then um, for home, I guess we'll just create one because, you know, this is, this is why you're in charge, Chris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about being in charge right now. I believe you're in charge. So we'll I'm say, just here. <laughs> home, and then we'll set home as the default path of here, and then uh, we can set up a nav, and our nav will use a link to uh, one, right? And I think that'll just work. So let's go. Let's go poke at this. Can't resolve components one. Uh, that's the import I think because I one because it didn't. Uh... What are you, did you explode? Yeah. Well, we're in source pages app dashboard, so you need either two oh. dot dot slashes or uh, yeah. I get it. That's just me being bad at code. <laughs> um, that's not. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's try this again. We got hey, hey, all right. So we've got our link, and but it's not showing our. Our thing. So why isn't it showing our home? It page? is showing page one, um, but the so router nesting with reach router um, is something that I'm not intimately familiar with. So do we need to do something work. special did about I, the nesting? Did I do something silly here? Let's see. Um, because we have the root paths for uh, the URLs. Oh, I, you know what I might need. Um, Right. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, and then it just works. And then when right. I click through to page one, it breaks because I did an absolute link. Yep, because there is no slash one. So this would be something you would put into, like, a const in your app. Um, but then we get Yeah, a page const one. or a wrapper around the link stuff. Yeah, something something to make sure that your, your team doesn't have to remember to do that. Um, but in general, like this is it. We've got ourselves a, a like functional uh, dynamic app. Like we're doing we're doing client routes. So this this is actually ejected from Gatsby entirely at this point. We're building this app as a plain React app. Um, if we wanted to do more, we could do something like having you know we've got our dashboard page. We could actually set this up as like dashboard as a folder with slash home slash one slash or I guess it would be slash index instead of home. Um, where you could navigate that as static paths and mm -hmm. load your dynamic content, you know, async once it got there. And this, yep. in this iteration, what we're doing is you're you're effectively like if you had a React app, you could just drop this. You could drop your React app right into a Gatsby theme and not have to migrate right out of the gate. So you could kind of get the benefits of the of some of what Gatsby does without having to fully refactor or rewrite the app. Yeah, this is this is a wrapper, and that means that you can put anything you want inside of that wrapper. Uh, so yeah, you can have as many of these themes in your Gatsby config as you want. Um, 
you can delegate as much work out to the themes or centralize it as you want. And uh, there's a lot of optionality here. So, you, yeah. you know, actually, what we should do <laughs> just to, to really show this off, let's um, let's just duplicate this theme. Yeah, let's and do it. we'll we'll do one with the static uh, static version. So sure. let me paste this in. I've got my Gatsby theme one. Let's call this one Gatsby theme two. And then we'll just hop in here and update the name. So you're going to be Gatsby theme two. Uh, we're not going to use client paths for this one, so we can just skip yep. that. And we can also skip this. Yep. And what we will do instead is we'll get down into the dashboard and we'll call this one, let's say, account. And, or actually, I don't want it to be account. I want it to be profile because we're going to keep a new folder in here called account. Um, and then I'm going to put profile inside of this. And we'll also add one called, or let me, instead of creating a new one, let me just. Uh, maybe just repeat what you just said about the account and the profile folder. Sure. Okay. So um, instead of setting up, like, in our, our first theme, we set up the dashboard. And the dashboard.js is where everything lives. Because we're doing static routing, we're going to set up the account, which is like the home, is going to have, um, that's going to be a folder. And then we'll just put actual files inside of it. So we've got a profile page, and then I'm going to copy and paste this in. And we'll call this one um, index.js. And so this one, I'm going to just simplify this pretty drastically here. Let's. Uh, we're not going to use reach router. We're just going to use link. And I'm going to set this up to say, like, account home. Um, and we will say we want to go to uh, profile. And this will be app account profile. Yeah, so you can uh, imagine what he's doing here is basically we just took all of our maybe auth restricted routes and gave them to a single theme to control right for the dashboard. And what we're doing now is something very similar to maybe what I would have done at Docker when we were building Docker Hub. And these uh, static paths could be done with either create page or as source pages files. And that means that we can actually render out all of the files that we need for SEO or for our marketing pages and things like that. Uh, so we can actually separate, like, here's the area that does all of the marketing stuff. And once we split out the client routes into their individual themes for those teams and then the marketing routes out for the marketing team, we can actually back those marketing routes with uh, remote CMS. So we get the full power of all of the static niceness of Gatsby. And we also get to split up our application uh, into different organizational pieces so that people can work on them. Yeah, and, and this is super exciting because if you'll notice, I basically just built uh, not a great website, but I just built a website in in That's here. Fantastic website. Um, and then all I had to do to make this site render did that save? Let me make sure that uh, that didn't save. What didn't it like? I think I might have just screwed something up. Oh, we need to install the oh, Gatsby we install theme. <laughs> so we're gonna do yarn We're workspace yarn, yeah. site add Gatsby theme two. At star so it renders um, I found out in Z shell you have to quote that star um, yep. we had a couple people run into issues where they were using Z shell and it did not work when they just wrote that out plain so pro tip sure. if you're using Z shell make sure you quote that star or you're gonna have issues um, then I can run yarn workspace site develop and it should pick up our, our theme and then I'm gonna go into the site and I'll just add another link here to the account app account an app uh, account profile well the, i made a home page so it should okay. it should work well, yeah i was just saying there's there's two pages in there that we can link to right yeah but so what i want to do here is uh so i should add some space between these or something but if i link to account <laughs> then account takes me into my actual account home page mm -hmm. and now i've got this uh this whole setup of being able to click around my account profile and if we had a common header or something that, that gave us our top level nav, like to the dashboard into the account page, we could share that in a another theme that had um, custom stuff. So we've got a question here. Uh, so the site folder works slowly like an entry point for the other themes, right? It, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the orchestration piece, right? We don't put too much stuff into the site itself, although mm -hmm. we could. 
what we're using is themes to organize subsections of our application based on uh, what organizational design we have in our company. Yeah, and so like on a big enough team, you would have somebody who owned like the, the welcome page would be the dashboard or something. So when you went to slash app, um, you would see like what that looks like and it would kind of be the, the leader into other areas of the app. Um, so it, uh, when I was working on, on the team at IBM, we had a team that owned that experience. They were supposed to nudge you toward different parts of the experience to help you find what you needed. Um, in this particular instance, we let the site itself be the, the part that leads in, but that could completely be installed through another theme that was owned by another team. So one thing that would be really cool here is you could set up something like Dependabot that would look for um, any updates to your dependencies. So if you've got all of your themes here installed, anytime that you get a new version, you could just automatically build and deploy. And as long as the test passed, your site goes live. So no one would actually need to own this particular code. This would just be an area to plug in different, er different teams, um, theme like UI micro front ends. Yep. So it's really, like this is, this is a really powerful model. I think there's, um, there's a lot of potential here, especially on like larger teams or in agencies, because uh, like where themes, like using this approach, you'd be able to do uh, you'd be able to do something like package up functionality, like e-commerce or a blog, but you can also package up portions of a of a broader website on large teams. So it works in both directions. Um, and there, there's a question about uh, can you use multiple themes for a site? Absolutely, that's that's what we're doing right here. Actually, we've got uh, these two themes installed, and theme one is controlling the uh, the dashboard, and theme two is controlling the account. And so we can see here we're in the account. But if I go back to home, I didn't na put add navigation or anything. We've got a dashboard, and this dashboard is is actually just a React app. So we're able to to kind of navigate around the site and see whatever we want to see here. Um, so this is, you know, this is really, really powerful stuff. Um, and then the second part of that question is, is a theme is a subsection of routes? Themes can be a subsection of routes, or themes can be packaged up punk functionality that is completely standalone. Like if you install Gatsby theme blog with no options, it will operate as an entire website. Um, but then you can configure it to be a subsection of your site by putting it at slash blog or slash posts or something like that. Yeah, and you can get as granular as you want with that. So themes are basically packaged up versions of anything that you can do in a Gatsby site, which means that you can have just like your header or just like your design tokens or just a set of components or a set of routes or a set of logic in Gatsby node, et cetera. So it, it's literally anything that you can do in a Gatsby site, you can wrap up into a theme and ship as an NPM package. Yeah. And then use. With, with added benefit of being able to make it configurable because the, the Gatsby config in a theme can be run as a function, so you can pass options in. So it's it's really, really powerful. Um, cool, well, I, I mean, I, I'm actually super impressed. We did that way faster than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. I mean, it, I, honestly, this, this uh, it, but it works out for the best because this is super loud in here. I don't wanna be a jerk to everybody who's trying to enjoy the green room, so. Um, and is, does anybody have any questions? Like you, now would be the chance. Throw them into the chat. Otherwise, I think um, Chris, any any parting words? Anything that you want people to take a look at? Um, there is no repo for you to go look at unless we push this repo up. So maybe we should push we, this repo up somewhere. We will push this repo up. It'll um, it'll be live and linked in the video description. And I will say that the plugin that we use, the Gatsby plugin Create uh, Client Routes, is a higher level over lower level code that you can write. Mm -hmm. So if you have like really niche, like intense requirements for us dealing with that logic, uh, you can go in and you can do much more interesting, much more custom things. Yeah, the, the specific thing that you would be looking for is um, Match Path, which, uh, where do we have this? Got it yeah, if you somewhere. look at the Gatsby plugin create client paths uh, index file, you'll or source index in GitHub. Oh, you, you actually got to get into the source index. All right, I'm just going to yeah, link to this so that, um, yeah. With Gatsby plugin config, any plans to make the config options able to take functions as parameters? Right now, plugin config is serialized. Uh, no, I think plugin serialization is sort of a core thing in the Gatsby config. So. Yeah, and, and that's not actually a Gatsby choice. That is an upstream choice that we are required to follow. Um, one of our dependencies, because I, I asked about this before, and the, the answer was that the tool that we use for this um, requires serialization. 
And with that being said, um, I'm going to put a quick shout out. So uh, this month is all July. We're doing the theme jam. So, oops, let me get the right browser open here. We've got the theme jam going. And if you're interested in learning how to build a Gatsby theme, if you want to ship a Gatsby theme, we have a, um, a contest going. So every, it's kind of like Hacktoberfest, if you've heard of that, where everybody who contributes, you're going to push open source code to your own repos and then submit it to our showcase um, to make it available to the whole Gatsby community to use as a theme. We are going to send everybody who ships a theme in July some exclusive swag that was designed by Maggie Appleton, the, uh, the fantastic illustrator who did this gorgeous... Uh, Dr. Susian Horn, um, and for two people who uh, meet the the criteria that we've set, that's listed out in the rules, along the lines of um, code quality, performance, accessibility, and checking all the boxes for a uh, a well maintained repo, we are going to buy those people an all expenses paid trip to come out to the next Gatsby Days, which uh, the next one's in London. If you can't make London, we will work it out with you so you can get to uh, Gatsby Days. But uh, flight, um, hotel. Repeat that last statement about Gatsby Days because you uh, locked up for a second. Ah, yes. So the, um, the for two people, we're going to pay for an all expenses paid trip to Gatsby Days. Uh, next one's in London. If you can't make London, we will get you out to one in the future. So um, please go check out the site. It's themejam.gatsbyjs.org. And um, we would love to see what you can create with these themes, whether it's a you know micro front end like we talked about today, whether it's a portion of functionality like a, a blog theme or an events theme, or uh, whether you're just putting a, a really artistic spin on one of the existing themes. Like you could skin the Gatsby theme blog and just make it look beautiful. Um, and that counts, that's a submission. So whatever you're feeling, whatever your, whatever your strength or your interest is, um, we wanna see what you can do with it. Um, Chris, where can people find you online? Uh, on Twitter, I am Chris Biscardi. On Twitch, I am also Chris Biscardi. Um, and if you want to find me other places, uh, search for Chris Biscardi and you'll find me. Excellent. All right, let me throw your Twitter handle in and then we'll also throw in your uh, Twitch. Um, Chris Biscardi, there you are. And uh, Chris does a pretty regular live stream where he goes mm -hmm. deep on like I've seen you do Babel plugins webpack customization um, like custom CPU builds like you're all over the place so it's a, a really it's a really fascinating stream to watch you should uh, definitely go subscribe to that and um, that being said please head over to my twitch page uh, it's at twitch.tv slash jlangstorf you're probably looking at it right now and um, <laughs> Hit that, hit that follow button so that you see upcoming streams. We've got a lot of exciting stuff. I've got Amberly Romo from the Gatsby team coming on um, next week, and we are going to build a podcast theme that allows you to just drop in an RSS URL, and we'll build the whole website for you. It's going to be extremely powerful. Please, uh, please come check, out, check that out. And otherwise, we will see you all on Twitter. Thanks so much for tuning in. See ya.